Hey, everybody, welcome back. We the OG, the original Grognard. Yeah, I'm still working on that. <laughs> so, what do we got here? <laughs> if you watched my last video, you probably got a good idea what I got in the box today. Space Infantry Resurgence. This is the Kickstarter edition. This is the retail copy. A retail copy. Not the only retail copy. Probably be kind of bad if I was the only one with a retail copy. Um, just to recap for those of you who may missed or not watched or didn't want to bother with the last video, uh, the container ship that has all the World of War 85, the lock and load starter kit, the Space Infantry Resurgent Kickstarter, so all the biggest, most recent shipment from the printer is currently docked at Prince Rupert, Canada, probably be there for another, well, probably should actually be getting underway today. It'll be arriving in Tacoma, Washington on the 11th. Uh, from there, they're going to have to offload everything, put it onto rail lines. And they're going to be shipped to Cleveland. And from Cleveland, uh, this will probably take day and a half, two days, maybe day, day and a half, two days to get to Cleveland. Cleveland, they're going to be taken off. They go through customs at that point. Uh, which is actually much easier and much faster doing at Cleveland than trying to do in Tacoma. In Tacoma. Um, day, day and a half going through customs, maybe more. I don't know what the exact custom dates are. Then they're going to be put on truck and then trucked to Pueblo, Colorado, where Lock and Load Publishing is at. And my estimation, again, this is just my estimation, probably arriving there around the 16th or 17th of December, uh, then David and crew are going to have to go through three containers worth of pallets and merchandising to start putting people's orders together. Probably going to be a couple, three days before the first orders even start going out. So 19th, 20th of December, probably. Again, this is all my, some, some, this is all me hypothesizing don't don't hold this as gospel uh because we know how often i get things wrong um possibly some people may get it before christmas a lot of people are going to start seeing it between christmas and new year's and the bulk of it probably should be out to people after the beginning of the new year yes i know some people are we're hoping to get this by christmas some of you may some of you may not it's, you know, it is what it is. Yes, this this should have been released in October. It wasn't. We've gone, we've had videos ad nauseum and ad length about the delays and why we do things through China. Watch the last uh, podcast that uh, David and I did uh, covering the shipping of the games and, and the issues and the, and the problems that are, that are included when, when dealing with an overseas printer. But Space Infantry Resurgence, it's coming, boys and girls. Just, just be patient. So, standard three-inch box. Standard lock and load deep three-inch box. I love these things. Core rules. Some of you will get the spiral bound. Some of you will not. It all depends on the on the uh, stretch goals that you that you uh, uh, signed up for. But again, it's the rule book. We've seen the rulebook before. I did a, I did a demo on the presentation copy uh, a few months back. Uh, all right. <laughs> oh my God! Cards, 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 cards everywhere. I mean, oh dice. We love dice. I mean, oh my God! Look at uh, uh, oh 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 my! It's just too heavy. Ah uh, ah! Uh, so many cards. We'll get to those in a little bit. <laughs> All right, Hive Tiles. From those of you who remember the original game, the Hive Tiles were just little normal cards. I mean, I think they were maybe this size. <sighs> oh, no, they were a little bit bigger than that. They weren't these. These are 4-inch, 5-inch, maybe 6-inch. I don't know. i got a tape measure there. I'm not going to bother. But these are the new tiles, and these things are thick. I mean, this is about as thick as regular. Now, actually, this is actually thicker than a counter sheet, I believe. Um, I mean, you can just hear how thick they are. Uh, but these are all the Hive cards. There's actually a lot more of them this time. And I don't want to say they're geomorphic, but they're mostly geomorphic. So you can 
you know, have a random hive each time you play. And the great thing about it, not only can you have a random hive, the nodes, uh, if you want to, if you want to know more about how the nodes work, uh, take a look at, uh, the Gimpy Gamer over at the Lock and Load Publishing, uh, uh, uh Facebook, or not Facebook, you, uh, YouTube has done a rules, go- rules play or not well, rules overviews and explains how the nodes work. So if you really want to know how the game plays, you can either go back and watch the video that I did several months ago with the, with the review copy, or you can go watch Gimpy's uh, Nate's, uh, Nate's, Nate's rules uh, working on it. So really, I mean, even just the hive alone, completely and totally replayable 100% because you're never going to get the same thing twice. So let's try pushing that button. Okay. Uh, all right. So, oh, bad guys. Look at all these bad guys cards. Ah, it just, see, that's the other thing I like about this game. Not only do you have massive replayability in the scenarios, but you've got 50,000 different friggin' opponents that you can fight. You got a turn record track here. So, okay, that's not technically an enemy card. Sequence of play card. Orders. Ah, but now here's here's a big enemy card, Elder Leviathan, and his card for how to defeat him. But you've got all the okay. So say say you do scenario one. Say you're against Void Spiders. You want to mix it up a little bit. Okay, so you got a Grav Tank there. All right, so you can play scenario one again, but this time be against mutants, and they have different types of abilities and skill sets. And then Grav Tanks is something that can show up. Flesh Eaters. Well, you want to play Scenario 1 again? Have a different enemy type? There's a different enemy type. Xeno, Flesh Eaters. And then you have different types of Flesh Eaters. And then you've got the Dark Roots. And you've got the Cybers. And you've got the Dark Faith. And there's some more Cyber Units. And Cathanians, which are Eldritch Horrors. And Beastmasters. And Battle Droids. And armored buildings and yada yada yada. You're never gonna you're never gonna play the same game twice. It's just statistically impossible for you to ever play the same game twice with this game. So those are all the enemy cards. Uh, oh, just so much. I'll take a look at that. so much so much cardboard. That's why the thing is so heavy. All right. So what do we got here? All right. So here's one of this. Here's one of the scenario cards. Or is this this isn't one of the scenario cards. That is, what is this? I guess this is one of the scenario cards. I think this is a little bit differently. Or is this the campaign? This may be, this may be part of the campaign. I mean, there's just so many different scenario types in this game. Let's see, what do we got here? Base Assault. I guess this, these are the regular scenario cards. They did change them from, uh, from when I saw them originally. So, you know, Base Assault. Mission Essentials, use map S7, which is kind of set up right here. Actually, I think these are the campaigns. But everything you need, I mean, all on these cards. What do we got here? Oh, for the campaigns, if you want to do a long-term campaign, you know, you can make up your own squad. You can go with pre-designated squads that are already built up. So Myco Squad right here uh, consists of Fire Team A, Fire Team B, Assault Team A, Assault Team B, and then support units of a shotgun, a sniper, a heavy weapons guy, a flamer, and a zero, zero G team alpha. Zero, yeah, zero G team alpha. And then a blank sheet so you can print out your own, so you can make up your own squads. Uh, here's a here is a campaign card. So second contact war, tunnel fighting, and it'll tell you. Okay, so these are the scenarios you go through, or and then the types of mission decks, strat wraps. I haven't gotten much into the campaign, so I'm not really sure how these are laid out. But so here's another campaign, Exodus Raids, Exodus Raids on the Cyber Frontier, First Contact War, Earth Controlled Space, Cyber Controlled System, Steel Bones. So not only do you have normal scenarios, you got a bunch of different campaigns to go along with the scenarios if you get tired of just running scenarios. And then here's another squad. This is J Squad, which is a little bit different than Mako. Uh, they've got Fire Team AB, Assault AB, Commander, Shotgun Sniper, Heavy Weapons, but instead of a Flamer, these have got uh, a zero, uh, zero G A Team and B Team. And then as you gain experience, 
you get different traits that you can spend on. So like your extra strength, this unit has one extra unit wound. <laughs> All right, cool. I'll take guys with extra wounds. And then here's blue squad with different formations. And here's another scenario or another campaign. Uh, then this has got co-op. You can actually play co-op in this now. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with the original. Uh, so we have the co-op player card here. And how it runs down. <laughs> you like tower defense games? This has got a tower defense game in it. <laughs> So it's got. It, I, I like to call that they did a lot of the expansions in this kind of like a DLC. And you normally have the first game set that comes out, and then they'll have more expansions. And all oh, this DLC has the tower defense expansion, and this DLC is the multiplayer, and this DLC is the PvP. It 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 kind of feels that way. They just jammed so much stuff in here, uh, rather than just a simple solitaire play game like the original was. Uh, so here's counters again, your standard lock and load with the corners clipped. I love that. Again, your standard lock and load thick counters. And I'm going to guess these are going to pop out real easy. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Not going to have any problem popping these suckers out. <laughs> I love that. Everybody hates... When they have counters that don't come out of the sprues and you got to cut them off with a razor blade or they tear the paper, these are just a delight. And so we've got a bunch of admin counters here. And it looks like these are mutations for, I think, some of the... Well, the mutants <laughs> would get mutations. So that would kind of change each unit's own individual because they've got all these different mutations. You've got the back side... Uh, then you've got your own counters fire team a fire team b assault a assault b sniper heavy weapons tech scientists medics and then these are used in the uh, tower defense and co-op and this is used in the tower defense these counters there but all kinds of good admin counters all right here's here's here there we go Here's what I was looking for. These are the actual game boards themselves and the scenarios. So, yeah, so some uh, mission S010, Vengeful Hawk. Uh, time, at core time today, regimental command was hit by a full plasma bombardment that reduced most of the complex and surrounding area to superheated glass. RC was in the middle of a sensitive decrypt operation. We need that data. Gear up and bring sunscreen. And then, so you've got the objective up here. Special resources, any expertise points, and then any special events. And then you've got the map board itself that you lay out. And they'll, they'll usually have an entry point, which will be right. I think that's the entry point. No, that's the exit point. Where's the entry point? Oh, I believe that's the entry point. And... When you set up the game, you have the scenario card, be it this one or any other one, and you've got a series of these node cards, and you randomly deal out the node cards on the board, so... You've got a stack of outdoor cards. You'll put an outdoor card face down there. You've got a stack of passage cards. You'll put a passage card there. You've got a, a deck of indoor cards. You'll put an indoor card there. You have mission-specific cards. Mission 10. And then... Oh, mission... There it is, right there. Start. Derp. Mission 10. Um, so basically, you populate the board with all these cards. And since you have a stack of them, and they're face down, and each card has a different issue that you're going to have to resolve, be it combat, be it a locked door, be it a chasm you have to cross, be it, you know, if, if it's an ice card, you might have a ice lake that you have to cross and some of your people could possibly fall through. Um, with those mission cards... Those node cards, you're not going to have the same... Again, another reason you're not going to have the same mission twice. So let's take a look at some more of these mission cards. Oh, yeah, here's, here's, a, here's, here's a big one. This is a tower defense. I'm not really sure how the tower defense works. I haven't played 
uh, any of the tower defense scenarios. Well, I call them tower defense, but it's basically horde mode, or if you used to play Gears of Gears of War, or, or wave modes, or you know the zombie mode, where you know it's basically you're just trying to hold off as many hordes of bad guys as you can by while setting up defenses. Uh, what else have we got here? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, this is one. Yeah, I've done this one before. I've played this one a few times. Find at least four scientists. In fact, I think I did a review. I did a playthrough of this one. But you have the mission start up there, and you basically just move from node to node. So again, here we have mission two outdoor. So you put one of the specific mission two outdoor cards, which are, you know, we've got... <laughs> Now, this is a huge deck of the cards, the node cards. And you move through, and it's basically moving from node to node, resolving the systems, uh, resolving the bad, you know, resolving the nodes. If you run into bad guys, you have to fight them, and hopefully you don't get all your guys killed off. Um, but again, endless replayability. This is, yeah, here's another one right here. So, I mean, there's 12 scenarios in the original, or in the base. But, I mean, you've got outdoor, you've got space, you could be in zero G, passages, indoor. And again, all these will change depending by even what enemy type you have. Um... You know, you could play the same mission four different times with four different enemies, and you'll 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 not play basically the same mission twice. So endless replayability, and I think it's really cool. And the cool thing is, the rules are really easy. I, you can play if you know what you're doing. You can bust out one of these scenarios in 15, 20 minutes. I mean, it doesn't take that long. Now, the I mean, first time you play it through, when you're when you're when you're when you're first starting and checking the rules and everything, it's going to take you longer. But once you've got a firm grasp on the rules, and if you don't have to go to the rules all the time, it's only going to take you 15, 20 minutes. All right. Then you've got, we've got mission cards here. And let's go ahead. Now these... Ow. Jam myself. That is not the safe way to use a knife. Fortunately, it's not that sharp and didn't cut skin. At least I don't think it did. Nope. Just pokied me. All right. So, <laughs> mission cards. And these mission cards are mostly, I think, for the campaigns. I think you draw these. Like I said, I haven't gotten too much. But these are encounters that you can run into while you're on the mission. Uh, let's see, what's this? This is... Okay, so mission type, boss, objective, kill the queen. Scenario resolution, resolution if you've actually managed to do it. That's big. <laughs> and you've got the other of these mission-specific types of cards. These are mostly going to be Hive, I think. Um, but yeah, these are... we got some uh, cards that give out the objectives. Scenario resolution. And these, again, these are mostly for campaigns. Set up how the campaigns, the, the story for the campaigns. And you can see there's lots and lots and lots of them. So, oh, here, I think. Am I looking at them backwards? I may be looking at these backwards. Okay, so yeah. Horde. So this is the, this is for the, uh, um, the tower defense wave. So Horde 1, you're going to be fighting against flesh eaters you're starting assets or six research points 30 squad points 20 building points so that's what you get to build your your defenses out of uh and then what you get interwave and then the final wave and then whatever each wave composition is and you know the random numbers if you're going against you can go against cybers mutants mercs darker i mean there's what one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different types of bait of 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 enemies types so, yeah. And these are tarot sized. These are much bigger than the normal playing card size. So, strategic options. Again, I'm pretty sure these are for 
campaign play or just, you know, stuff if you want to throw in special. Uh, so, strategic options. Uh, heavy battle suit. Place two multi-purpose counters on this card. During combat after signing wounds, you may spend one wound counter to remove one wound or one AP wound just assigned. So we got heavy battle suits that you can add in. Maximum resources, medical support. My, these are just things that can help you in your missions. And in campaigns, I think if you win campaigns, you can draw from here. Just things to help out your squad. Uh, special locations. More mission cards. These are the enhancements to the missions. So encounters that you could run into during the mission. And then mission types specifically. I haven't really played too much with the mission cards, so I can't speak to too many of them. Again, I think most of these go along with uh, the campaign play. Uh, tunnels encounters. Let's see. Yeah. Special locations that you can run into when you're doing certain scenarios. Again, tarot sized. Uh, <laughs> and then the actual cards themselves for your guys and the bad guys lots and lots and lots of cards so apex tanks so these are your assault these are your team members are you you have so many points that uh that you can build your your squad with and the points values are in the upper right hand corner so if you want to purchase assault team b it's going to cost you 20 points you want to command command and control team it's going to be 40 fire team a is 30 so these are all the cards that make up your squad. Demolitionist is 10, Medic is 20, so on and so forth. And there are veteran versions for all these. I think the veterans are on the, yeah, the veteran version is on the back, I think. Zero G, maybe not. Command four, 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 three. All right, maybe not so much on those. I know there are veteran versions. Where are they? But anyways, more people. Named people that you can take. No, those are the those are your troop types. Strategy. Now these I'm not sure. Oh, okay, yeah. Oh, this is this is <laughs> the Xeno Mine. This deck is used when you're doing player versus player. One person takes the, the big bad nasty, and the other player tries to make their way through with it. And these are the different strategy cards that the uh, that the monster can play when, when the humans are running through and running into different uh, encounters as they're trying to get to the big bad. So you get a deck of the, you get a, so many of these cards, and you can play them on combats or, you know, just whenever you, the, 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 the enemy player feels like playing them. Uh, what else we got? Uh, void spiders. Okay, these are these are monsters. So the void spiders. Let's see there. Okay, so these are all the void spiders cards, but they're different types. Uh, let's see, those are similar. These are the units cards that you're going to put out if you run into encounter. Let's say you run into four type one void spiders. Uh, then, you know, you've got the four that you put out, and that's how you keep track of combat versus your guys. Right, what else have we got? Here? We got titans. Uh, mutants. Mutant hybrids. Mutant outliers. And they have all the stats on their form. Their fire stat, their melee stat, their wounds, plus any special rules they have, which looks like the mutant outliers don't have. Titan. Yeah. Heavy, <laughs> heavy armor. Vehicle heavy armor damage 4+. plus. Penetration. So those are now. I know these aren't all the bad guys. No, no, there they are, right there. There's more of the bad guys. So every enemy type that you could potentially encounter has a card to go along with it. And that, yeah, that's what this deck mostly is right here. So armored buildings, and they're called bunkers. 
Cathanic Young. I mean, uh, it's just, just, I mean, just take all these cards together. So, <laughs> I mean, that's a huge amount of bad guys that you're going to be running into. Ah. Uh, so cards, cards everywhere. I'm going to kill myself for not doing those neat. All right, so here are the node cards. The node cards are important because that's what they put down on the scenario sheet as you're running through, and you flip them over and to reveal what each node encounter is going to be. So let's see. Uh, scenario location, node, Queen's Landing. So if you're playing the scenario that has the Queen's Landing, I mean, that's that's right there. That's that's what it's going to be. Uh, code node, recon, campaign node. So if you're doing the campaign node, your recon areas, mill spec. These are the hive. Fairly certain these are the hive. Yes, these are the hive. And then you have special nodes, node tables, that you have to go to to roll to see what the event there is. Uh, oh, and then you've got hive cave in. And more hive cards. Let's see what a hive cave in. So if you're on a, a hive card, let's see where I got them buried. Uh, right here. So, okay, yeah, so right here. If you're playing this card and you're putting the node card down, you would grab one of these question marks, put it on there. When your unit moves into there, then you'd flip it up to see, all right, so it's, okay, special node table. So I'd have to go to the special node table, wherever that is, or say I pulled this one. Use special node table G. So that will determine what the event there is. Uh, hive cave in. So if you've got a hive card that's got a cave in, you'll put one of these on there. Now, what are, what's important about these? Let's take a look at anatomy. Basically, what it is, is you've got the chance right here of an encounter on a six-sided dice. So if you move into here, you roll a six-sided dice. If you get a five or plus, then you're going to be looking at an A-level encounter. Now, the A-level encounter is going to determine, or going to be determined by uh, whatever enemy you're you're fighting. So, if for some reason you're in you're 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 in a hive fighting the cybers, and you get this card. For a 5A, you roll a five, then you'll get an A encounter. So you go to the class A, determine the number randomly, and that basically tells you who, who what you're going to be fighting against. Obviously, you're not going to be fighting in every space that you move into, but there is a chance that you will. Also, every card has an associated skill that's required to proceed through it. Since this is a cave-in card, you're going to need to use your advanced skills, which pretty much everybody has. And you're going to need to get five successes. I'm not going to get fully into the rules, but you roll every person who has the skill that you need, you roll and you determine how many successes you get. If you equal or exceed the success number, then you whoops, successfully defeat that node and you can proceed. If you don't, well, then you got to try it again next turn. And this is where the timer of the turn track comes into play, because if you spend too long trying to clear out nodes, if it takes you four turns to, to get five advancement skill checks successful, well, that's four less turns you have advancing through the rest of the mission. Now, there's some other special ones we got here. See, these are more hive cards. So let's take a, let's take a look at another one. All right, so yeah, this is this is a, this is again similar to the the cave in one. Five plus, you'll have an A encounter, but the skill is advanced five. But oh, that's a space card. We don't want to see that. Um, oh, so okay, so here's a hive cave. Uh, automatic. You are automatically going to run into encounter. It's going to be a class B encounter, and then to advance through this node or to continue advancing after if. If you get stuck with with the combat, well, in this one obviously you will because it's auto. Then you got to. Then this is what the skill you have to overcome to continue advancing. Uh, one through three, there are three difficulties that you can play the game at. One is easy, two, and it just depends. Basically, however difficult you want to make the scenario that you're playing, um, will de determine which cards. And since this is one through three, this could be in skill one, skill two, or skill a uh, skill one, two, or three game. Uh, that's going to be, and I'm not sure what that is. So this one right here. So take a look, uh, this, the, if you roll a five plus, you'll run into an A encounter and this card is in any skill level one and two games you play. Uh, this one, 
this is a little bit different. This is going to be any skill level two or three game. So if you're playing a skill level one, this card won't be in the deck. But this is going to be a four plus, and then you'll run into an A type encounter, and it's a special. It's a base. Uh, bases. But yeah, these are all the different node cards. And then he, here's another one, climb. You need to get two successful climb skill checks to to navigate this node. And then demolitions. Sometimes you need science. Sometimes you need scout search. So just in this deck of hive cards, you have a massive number of potential encounters that you're going to run into. And you again, when you set up this board, you populate the, the boards beforehand and you don't know what they are until you actually move into the space and reveal the card or move into the area. So those are those are hive cards. We've got space cards here. And so any space cards are passage cards. Underground. Whoops, helps if I can. <laughs> All right, space cards, passage cards, underground cards, indoor cards, and they're all themed. I mean, so you take a look at the space card, you know, four plus, you're going to run into an A encounter and it's only, you're only going to run into it if you're running on skill level three, but the event is a zero G, you need four successes with zero G skill. So that is going to be different than a passage card. Let's take a look at a passage card. And obviously the artwork is even different. You've got outdoor spacey type, and now you've got a passage card and, you know, Four plus, you'll run into an A combat encounter. It's only in skills two and three. And to get past this node, you need a security three check. Let's take a look at another passage card. This is going to be a five plus. You'll run into an A encounter, which is different than this card, which is only in, a, and this is only in a skill level one game. This is a skill level two, three. This requires security three. That requires security three. So you've got passage cards. Let's take a look at an underground card. Well, that kind of looks like a hive card with the art, but it's a 4A, skill level 2 or 3, tracking 2 to get through. Here's another one, tracking 2, but it's a 5A. Here's one that needs a scouting card to get through. So, and since you don't know what skills you're going to be needing, you kind of sometimes have to backtrack and you might run into a skill that you don't have, so you're going to have to try to find another path. So here's an inside card. So they're all themed. You've got outdoor cards. So I think that's kind of cool that they're all themed a little bit differently. Uh, and not only do you have the node specific cards, but you also have mission specific. So I can, as I was kind of showing earlier, there was that one that had uh, mission two nodes on it. Well, you also have mission specific node cards so like here's mission 12 let's see how many mission 12 cards there are and there's always going to be more cards than there are nodes so you're not really ever sure that you're going to be running into everything but so if you were playing mission 12 you'd also pull out these mission 12 specific cards and put them on the node locations when you're going through as well let's take a look at some of these so this is a, a four plus you run into an a encounter it's skill levels one two three and you need a communication two to get past there's a demolition skill, there's an intelligence skill, there's a scout, and there's auto automatic enemies that you're going to run into. And most, but not all, have mission-specific cards. Like there's mission 11, mission 10, and they're themed a little bit more for the specific scenario you're doing. Mission 6, 4, you know, all the way through. Mission 2, uh... War theater, I think, I think, I think, war theater is what they call the uh, the horde mode. But you've got these specific cards. War theater. Oh, and then of course, if you're playing the nest, outpost, outpost Leonidas, holding cells. Now these are specific. You're playing this this specific scenario, so you put this there. The holding cells are always going to be the holding cells. So if you got a holding cell spot on the card, you pretty much know this is going to be the one. It's going to be auto. You're going to be run into a sentry bot, and you're going to need demolition three to get past the or the skills to get past it. Uh, so that 
is that. I hope I didn't confuse people. I mean, it seems a little bit confusing, but actually when you put it all together and start playing, it's actually really easy. Like I said, I would I would really recommend going and checking out uh, Gimpy's, uh, the Gimpy Gamer, uh, his his rules uh, recaps that he does. I guess I'm just going to throw these in here. Future me is going to hate trying to shuffle these later, but I'm not going to try to do it now because I still have one more box. This is just the base game. This is just the first basic retail. Now we have to look at what's in the... Oh, I got counters everywhere. That's okay. As long as we don't lose the counters. And of course I put the box upside down. <laughs> There we go. Now for the expansion. This is the Kickstarter stuff. So these are the Kickstarter goals. What do we got in here? Oh my God, more cards. Ah, what do we need more cards for? What kind of more cards have we got? More node cards. So even more randomness in it. What kind of node cards are we looking at here? All right, well, we have equipable items. What is that, a Gauss rifle? Ooh. Add another skill level of four to your fire skill when making fire skill checks with this unit. Each failure adds minus one AP to each subsequent skill check with this activation. So that's a mag rifle. Oh, no, these are all, oh, these are all different. What, it was, what one was that one? Yeah, that's mag rail, so that's a Gauss rifle. Uh, you have an Atex shotgun. Go ahead and put these down. I'm a gun guy. I like guns. Uh, the Styre 12 Dark Star. Exo Battle Suit. The Armex Fire Knife. Fire Knife. Ooh! When a unit equipped with this weapon generates a melee uh, SL, roll a random number. On a 5+, plus, the SL is converted to flame damage. Ooh, that's cool. So basically, it's a flaming sword. <laughs> Uh, TRX-7 Lasblade, T-48X Plasma Caster, React Shield. These are, ooh, equipment cards. Yeah, something you can trick out your crew, crew yeah, yeah, yeah. your squad with even more. Uh, oh, here we go. <laughs> Ultra Map. We'll be getting to that in a little bit. Mission UT-01 Ultra Map. And there are a bunch of node cards to go along with that. Let's take a look. Uh, five plus mission, one through three security. I'm, I mean, I'm guessing mission is going to be determined on the ultra map mission. So, yeah, you kind of got to pick and choose what skills you take on you because you're not going to be able to get all the skills and you hope that you don't run into something you don't. There is a way you can generate successes if you don't have that skill, but it really slows you down and it takes your uh, your commanding officer to do it. So you want to try to spread out your skills all over the place so you can pretty much be assured of having everything covered. Ah, now here with the Kickstarter also goals, they had uh, terrain specific. So if you wanted to do an outdoor, say if you say you're doing a, sh a scenario and you're, you're, you just use the regular outdoor mission cards. Well, what if you want to change the outdoor mission to the outdoors is actually a desert instead of generic, or maybe you want to switch the outdoor, uh, type to urban, or maybe you want to switch the outdoor type to jungle or maybe you want to switch the outdoor type to you seeing a theme here boys and girls to ice and these are all themed differently so instead of using just outdoor um outdoor cards you can theme thematically theme them and these are going to be themed for ice or themed for jungle. You're going to be climb. You're going to need fire. You're going to need search or themed for urban computer skills, demolition skills. So it just gives you a little bit more theming variety. And I think that's really cool. So even if you do a normal mission, you add in the Kickstarter outdoor cards that increases because you can play one scenario, be it themed desert, 
turn around and play the exact same scenario, theme it for ice or urban. Again, it's it's just replayability. And then a bunch more underground cards. Well, not a bunch more, but a few more underground cards. Let's go ahead and spin. let's take a look at what some of these are. Oh, that is new. I have no idea what that is. I think these, oh, you know what? These are the advanced. These are the ultra, ultra hard. This is a uh, ultra vault hunter mode. <laughs> these are what you're, if you really want a real challenge. And I think that's going to be the same way with space and passage and all the rest. Yeah, these are all, okay, yeah, I remember reading about that now. These are all the, uh, yeah, this is this is hardcore mode. So <laughs> so now with the Kickstarter cards, you now have a fourth level of difficulty that you're playing at rather than, you know, stages one, two, and three that you had originally in the base game. Now there's a fourth difficulty. See, kind of like I said, there's kind of this theming with uh, com with uh, with uh, downloadable content. It's like, yes, we eventually unload, download, or you eventually download the content. We have ultra, ultra hard mode. Uh, nightmare mode. Yeah, that's what it is. It's called nightmare mode. That's right. And then planet cards for, yeah. So these are, okay. If you're playing with a jungle, uh, theme, uh, after triggering a jungle event, generate a random number. It's a swamp or wildlife or sinkhole or tree fall. And then if you succeed, benefit, give one unit of talent from your squad roster. So cool. So there are other things above and beyond so like here, if you're in the biome of ice, after triggering an ice event, then you roll on here, and that'll determine what extra things. Let's see, what are all the mission cards? Encounters, death mark, long game, boarding action, heist, internal affairs, ancient vault. Oh, that's pretty cool. Black ops, squad problems, system breakdown, dark past. So yeah, just, just more mission cards to increase the variety of the encounters that you can run onto on the planet. Okay, now, remember when I was saying about the monster map? Yeah, this is uh, <clears throat> this is one half of the monster map. I'll go ahead and pull out a bit so we can see all of it. Yeah, that's one half of the monster map. bunch of different nodes on there this is not from what i understand this is not a, a a mission that you do at one shot it's kind of a campaign and you have to slowly work your way through it and reach checkpoints and stuff like that but i mean here's the other one and basically it's Basically, there it is. That's 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 the mega map, the mega mission map. So, <laughs> again, not something you do in one shot. You go in, clear out what you can, and then come back later. At least as far as I understand it. <clears throat> Uh, and then just more mission cards. And then a campaign card, a new campaign. Ooh, this one has 15 missions in it. The reinforcements you can grab, scenario sequence, yeah. So yeah, that's uh, so that's the Kickstarter. I again, I think one of the stretch goals was the novels and the uh, audiobooks to go along with it. Again, I have heard the audiobook before. Uh, pretty good job. I mean, it's 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 kind of a espionage. It's part military military thriller, part espionage, and all bug hunt. Although they're not really fighting bugs, but it's a, it's a bug hunt anyways. Everybody knows what a bug hunt is in space opera terms. So we love bug hunts. That's why we like military space operas. So we go on bug hunts. So that right there, were there dice? Oh, I cannot remember if this stretch goal had dice with it. Maybe, maybe not. 
I, well, since I can't remember, I'm not going to commit to it. But that is Space Infantry base game and Space Infantry with the full Kickstarter expansion. Um, again, to get a really good look at a good idea what's in here, go check out uh, the Gimpy Gamers um, videos that he's done. It can be found on his web page or on his YouTube of the Gimpy Gamer, but they're also uh, published on the Lock and Load Publishing YouTube, which you really all should be following. I mean, if you're, if you're a Lock and Load fan and you're not following or subscribed to the YouTube channel, you really should. Uh... What else have I got? I think that's about it. This one's getting to the table, too. Eventually, I have just recently got a bunch of stuff, so it may take me a little bit to get to this. But we are going to be playing some more Space Infantry Resurgence. And hopefully doing a better job than I did the last time I played it. Hopefully. Questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms in the comment section. I'll talk to everybody later. See ya!